Welcome back at it, friends, and now joined by, it's crazy to think, the senior now, Mr. J.T. Kroll. Good to see you, young man. What's going on? Not much, just living life. You grew since the last time I saw you. Just a little bit. What, about six, two and a half? Around. Two yes, what? Sir. Two? 275. 275. It fluctuates sometimes on a good day, 280. You've moved around, too, because when I first knew you, you were on the defensive side of the ball, playing a little defensive tackle, and this is your first year transitioning to the offensive side. Yes, sir. You know, really, really to you, what prompted that move and, and just how much have you enjoyed it? I know we're only one game in, but what have you enjoyed so far? I like just the mentality of the O-line a little more. You know, you just get to – it's more controlled aggression than it is just defensive where it's just nonstop aggression. Offensive line, you got to be a little more smart with it. So I like that aspect of it. You know, also getting to protect the quarterback, making lanes for your running game. And we just saw that here versus A&M Consolidated as, you know, you're running back there, Brown, over 100. It shows 130, but officially about 110, 112 yards. What kind of joy does that bring you just knowing that you're creating opportunities for your guys to be able to run the ball effectively? It makes me smile knowing I'm doing my job right because I got Offensive Player of the Week. And Lord knows O-line doesn't ever get no, doesn't get any recognition half the time. So it makes me a little excited to know that I got enough recognition just for blocking people. Yeah, and I was just about to kind of dive into that. You already answered the question about receiving that honor. And you're right, you know, but you guys don't do it for the recognition. You do yeah. it because you're out there doing a job. And I know you well enough to know, but it does feel good just knowing, hey, our efforts are being recognized out there. Maybe highlight some of your teammates and just, you know, having to, having to switch to the offensive side now and, and be there. What is that transition like for you and, and how's the chemistry re really been able to work together? Uh, the chemistry's been nice. Uh, switching over was kind of hard at first last spring because I had no clue what to do. But John Trey and Brian Parker, they helped me out a lot. Just understanding the plays and stuff because if you were out here last spring, I had no clue. <laughs> Well, again, J.T. Kroll joining us, offensive tackle here this year with the Huntsville Hornets, now a senior on this team. You're more of a, a leader, too, on this squad now. When I first met you a few years ago, you were learning from guys. Now the roles have changed. You're teaching guys. What have you really embraced over those three years that you're learning now that maybe you're teaching your younger teammates? Just that it's more than a game, but at the same time, it is a game, you know. A lot of these kids focus too much on the aspect of football and not just going out there and having fun. But some kids, they don't know that they're having too much fun and they got to take it back a notch and just try their hardest. See, that's where the leadership's already coming out because you're saying these kids and you know what, you don't feel like you're maybe a kid anymore. You've grown into a young man now and you're able to teach these young guys. You know, you go up against a very tough and competitive A&M consolidated team. I say that phrase a lot, but you guys are tough and competitive as well. What was kind of the energy heading into that game? I know everyone was really excited about opening up the game at, at the new Huntsville ISD Stadium, but still having to play a few at Bowers, but still a lot of energy. Maybe highlight that a little bit heading in. Oh, the offensive line, we were hyped as all get out. We were, we were ready to go out there and hit people. We were watching film all week. We, we knew exactly what was going on, where they were going to come from, because Coach St. helps us out a lot on the film, and he breaks down every little detail of it. So that's helped us out a lot, and just being able to understand that they're, they're going to blitz, even though they're hiding it very well. Don't get me wrong, A&M is a great defense, but we knew what was happening. What do you feel like, as Coach was talking earlier, they always say you learn a lot from the first game to the second game. Maybe some things from that opening game versus A&M Consolidated that, that you guys are going to work on and now carry into Brian coming up on Friday. Just keep the energy level up because when they scored on us, a lot of kids got down real quick and we had to get on them. So they. So they knew that we're, we're able to win it. We were able to win it, but you know, sometimes God has better plans. When you look ahead to, to Brian coming up here on Friday, what are some things that you maybe just personally, from your individualism on the team, I know it's a team effort, but there's things that you work on as an individual. What are some things that you really want to work on heading into this matchup on Friday? My cuts, my cut box can be better and just all out, just dogging them. And, my goal is to get at least five pancakes, so Coach Santa let me wear my eye black again. Hey, you know what, man? Pancakes, I hop, I go with the confetti ones. You know, I know you're talking football, though, man. So we'll hope we'll see those five coming up. All More right, of man. A chocolate chip guy myself. All right, there you go. Uh, looking in, pregame rituals for you. Is there anything that you specifically have to do every pregame, pre JT? Pray. That's a pray good one, man. And 
read at least two or three Bible verses. Now, I got to ask you another question because I never did ask you this before when I knew you a few years ago. <laughs> Be honest, if I walked in, I probably wouldn't even recognize you now just from how you've grown. But, you know, a few years ago, there was an old nickname kind of floating around that you probably haven't heard in a long time, Possum. Yes, and uh, how did that come about? You're not called that now, but now because we brought it up, Possum may make a comeback. Are you okay with that? Oh, I'm great with it. My, my Papa Joe gave it to me as a little kid, and my dad yells it at me. So a few other kids heard it growing up. And then the Bobinos found out about it, and Brian, half the time, that's just what he called me. Or he'd call me Little Man. He was a wide man. You know? he, was, <laughs> he was pretty big. <laughs> Maybe something about J.T. Kroll that folks don't know, something that, that you would say, hey, no one out there knows this about me. I'm an open book. I'm pretty sure most people know about me. but. Uh, very religious, very set on God, and just, I try to make everybody happy. You know, I just, I like, I'm not a people pleaser, but I just like bringing joy to people. That's great, man. Well, that's what it's all about here in Huntsville and why we lift up the community and lift up you guys. So, JT, appreciate you. Camera's there. Who do you want to say hello to here on this interview, young man? My family, God, all my friends, and even the people that don't like me, you know. They thinking about me either way, so. All right, there he is, J.T. Kroll, a man of uh, good words, and he wants to lift up this community and the rest of his teammates and excited about Brian coming up. So uh, we'll see him. And on the count of three, give us a Stingham Hornets. You ready, man? Yes, sir. One, two, three. Stingham Hornets. Stingham Hornets. Well, that'll wrap it up, friends. I'm Rob Hibbs. Stay tuned in and locked right in here on Hello Huntsville for the latest updates of what's happening in our community, including our Huntsville Hornets.